Before we even get started, check that out. Drax is reading a book on sarcasm to brush up on his skills. And it's not often that we're given such extensive difficulty options. The first setting we choose is just a preset, and we get to go into the nitty gritty of exactly how we want to experience the game. Something that flies under the radar throughout is the actual score composed by Richard Jock. The licensed music is great, but there's no replacing a beautiful original score in any film or game. If you were wondering where Peter got the name Star-Lord in this universe, we find out that Star-Lord was his favorite band when he was young. Steve Shipkowski and Johan Boudreau actually created an entire fictional 80s theme rock album just for Guardians of the Galaxy called Space Riders. I totally forgot when Chewie showed up later that he was a part of the last interactions with his mom. Makes Corel and Peter's history even more serious, if he had been willing to give that to her. Peter Quill. Quill, Quill. Peter Quill. It seems Drax went to the Joey Diaz school of addressing people. Not once does he not call him Peter Quill. The betrayer is ready to begin her mission. She has requested your presence in the cockpit. Gamora's on our side, Drax. This game is hilarious. Like, really funny. I haven't laughed out loud this many times playing a game since I could remember. Instead of playing every single track that made me laugh, I'll save you some time. Easily 30 wins for the sheer number of jokes alone. Like seriously, a lot of what were gonna be wins was just me appreciating the funny, well-written dialogue. Does his hair scream douche lord? Yeah. Have I been rocking the same cut for the last five years? Also yeah. Point being, Peter is way better than his haircut represents and so am I, goddammit! So these Guardians have a lot of similarities to the film versions. For good reason. One, they're like coming from the same source material. But more importantly too, it was actually creative director Jean-Francois Dugas' choice to make them similar to the film versions. The idea was to make them instantly recognizable and understandable before throwing their own spin on the characters. Instead of just pulling from the comments, they pulled both from it and the MCU, then produced their own original spin on the characters, which I believe paid off. I really love all the performance of the Guardians. They don't feel like just impressions of the MCU. Each of the Guardians brings so much life to their character. I actually think I like this group more than the films. And to Eidos Montreal's credit, never once to me does Guardians of the Galaxy feel like a ripoff of the MCU. In many ways, it takes what worked in both films and comics and approves upon them in every way. Check out the Star Wars wipe in our space opera. Incredible. Incredible indeed, Drax. All of the alien worlds are absolutely stunning. Such a unique art design with dazzling color. No, seriously, the amount of color present in Guardians of the Galaxy is stellar. This is a space opera, and Eidos did not hold back when creating these spaces. Not one planet feels like another, or just a copy and paste of assets. <laughs> no, seriously, this game is absolutely stunning. One of the best looking games I've ever played. The sense of scale, along with the art design, along with the literal graphical fidelity. <laughs> the only reason I'm not gushing more is because I can't get my hands on an RTX card and use ray tracing, which I can only imagine would blow my mind more. I was already in love with the traditional lighting techniques Eidos used here. Check out that Kree Sentry head. Looks just like the one from Marvel's Avengers. Like, just like it. And since I brought it up, though Guardians of the Galaxy was developed alongside Avengers, this game ended up feeling like a reaction and apology for what Square did with that game. And I'm sure Square planned this. Let's make a live service game and a single player narrative with no DLC. And throw all our resources at the one that makes the most money. So if you haven't already, I implore you, go buy this game. We have to vote with our wallets that we don't want obvious lazy cash grabs like Marvel's Avengers. You think it's to impress Gamora? Like, hey, check out the serious intel I got from, you know, shady sources. These branching choices we get to make really brings us into the shoes of Star-Lord, especially later with the huddles and later later with bigger decisions. And that brings me to why only playing as Peter throughout is a good thing. Maybe the best thing that they decided to do. If we played as all the Guardians, they'd just feel like avatars that we watch and play as. But by placing us in the boots of Peter, we are forced to watch the Guardians interact with and around us and make decisions from Peter's perspective. It gives the player a sense of ownership in the Guardians. Like we have a place among them, even if Peter is going to still go through his arc independent of the player choices. This focus on only playing Peter was definitely a creative choice, as much as it was likely a financial and structural one. Imagine how much more money and time it would have cost to create four more playable characters with upgrade trees like Quill. Other parts of the game would have likely suffered, most of all the story. As much as we all want a co-op Guardians game, it was the right choice to not. Thought I saw a shortcut. shortcut. Right. Go ahead without me. Little dialogue bits like this speak to the history that these guys have together. And as we go throughout the quarantine zone, we understand why these three are together and left the other two behind. Can I just say how excited I am for this current gen as these hidden loading screens will be going the way of the dinosaurs? Aw, oh, hey little guy. <laughs> okay, I lied. There are some moments I'm gonna have to acknowledge. John McLaren's Peter Quill is the best. And along with world design, Eidos makes good on delivering some not so stereotypical alien creatures. Flark, flark, flark! You know, it took a while to get used to Flark, but after 22 hours in this game, I found myself saying Flark, so 
Whatever the flarker takes to keep your T rating. More like a real smart walking gun. A very talkative gun. <laughs> yeah, that part was an accident. <laughs> Making light of past trauma can be a step to the healing process? Maybe? Anyone else getting Horizon Horus unit vibes from this? I'm gonna get my hands on some rotating hyper circuits. Boo! No one knows what those are! It's Quill speaking for the players. I'm telling you, it's totally safe. See? I'll even prove it. Huh? Look at this. <gasps> Irony. If you weren't sure of these two being lover boys, a fake out self sacrifice is one way to do it. Damn, is the scale of everything really put into perspective when standing on the Milano? I knew the ship had a living quarters, but I don't know. The ship big. Thrax's candor never gets old. They don't ever bring it up later, but holy shit. This is the same room that Adam Warlock had his totally not vision mind soul stone removed. Sometimes we've got no idea what Groot is saying. And other times we know exactly what it is. Okay. He's definitely saying, what the flark? Ugh, this place is crawling with ugly. Uglies? Yeah, kind of looks like a bleached booty hole with hemorrhoids made by Japan now. Make up your mind. Are you mad I served Thanos or that I betrayed him? Neither. Inspire confidence. Understandable and reasonable honesty. I'm waiting until we got the whole team together to mention their gameplay. I think it's great for what they were going for. It's not my cup of tea, but it's really strong for showing and handing the leadership title to Peter. We have to set up the targets and order the Guardians to knock them down. And on that token, it's very intentional that we aren't the strongest on the team. And that's to push us to use the Guardians' abilities and make us all feel like a cohesive unit. Guys, huddle up! The huddle is a fun, novel idea. A great way to inject our veins with that oh-so-good license music. And force us, the player, to read and lead our fellow Guardians. I lost my sh** that I failed my first huddle and Eidos rickrolled me. Is it working? Yeah, yeah, don't worry, sunshine. <laughs> sunshine. Ow! You know, I enjoyed they didn't try to squeeze in the Gamora and Quill romance into this game. It would have undermined the corell nikki relationship with Peter and probably would have just felt forced and unearned. But John McLaren and Kimberly Sue Murray have great chemistry together and hope to see them more in the sequel because I want a f sequel. Doing it? What? It appears to be broken! Ain't nothing broke! And he insists he's not an animal raccoon. Nothing more Guardians than capturing a llama with a cool haircut. <laughs> I ran so far away by Flock of Seagull is so much funnier if you imagine a llama being the titular woman in the song. But it's more likely talking about the Akanti. It is Nova Corps. <laughs> this logo is turned upside down just like Peter and the Guardians are about to be with the Nova Corps. But it's also the fact that the Guardians aren't a cohesive group yet, so it's upside down. Aren't you a little young for the Corps? Aren't you a little old for that hairdo? Haha, <laughs> I just knew exactly what they were doing with that cut. No, you do not got this, pirate. Godding this like father, like daughter. <laughs> Hold on! You could read this as trying to look good to lighten the arrest, but in reality, Quill really is just a great guy at heart. So, being the good guy. Saving your unknowingly unofficial adopted stepdaughter, kinda. And unknowingly saving your not actually but kinda only hope at a dad dad. Come on, this way. Okay, wow, that's <laughs> just blatantly gonna ignore me and go crawling into a dead end. I always get a good kick out of characters pointing out our gamer tendencies. Oh, wow. Don't laugh. No, no, this is cool. Though she's arresting Peter, he can't help but empathize and enjoy her. I would have loved to see more of these two directly interacting, but we got plenty for me to care about getting her back. Is this... Kreelar? Uh, yeah. Long time ago. Kid stuff. I could do it way better now. Typical adorable kid response. It's like, I'm not a kid anymore, you know? Tell me about it. Peter never really grew up like a normal person since he was abducted so young. This response is genuine. I think you do, because somehow you keep bypassing every security measure on this ship, and I want to know how. Or you can just show me. Mom, <laughs> I seriously have no idea what you're talking about. Look at these facial animations and lip syncing. It's not that no other games haven't done it well, but it's never stood out to me the way it does here, especially the more nuanced parts of the face, such as the eyes and the areas around the mouth. The actors and mocap and animation artists are working better together than the Guardians are by the end. It wasn't. Seemed pretty down to me. Are you seriously lying for a 12 year old right now? Peter's basically 12 himself. You empty your pockets. Nikki. What? I know you're hiding something. I still have feelings for you. <laughs> God, these writers are so good. 
Checking out Quill's pins, he's got a Space Invader one. That tracks. The black one is a vinyl record player adapter for playing 7-inch records on standard turntables, and the last one is for his favorite band, Star-Lord. You can keep him if you want. He is yours. Hey, I ordered him to look out for you. Expect him to keep doing his job. Hmm, they still got some feelings for each other. This Guardians of the Galaxy thing, we are this close to getting it off the ground. It's really cool seeing the Guardians build themselves up slowly with business cards and the like, instead of just saving the galaxy in a week and grabbing the title. Is it just me, or does the first two notes of Tainted Love sound like Imperial March in a different key? And I mean, Tainted Love, these two, I mean, they spell it out for you why it's a win. And on that token, the crew over at Eidos did their homework when it came to the use of licensed music. It's always so great for the moment that they use it in. How many prisons did you break out of? Seven. Seven! Seven. Now why don't you leave me alone and bother someone else instead? I intend to. Honesty of future bothersome endeavors. I know you are in there, sentient tree! No one's here had to be what he said. I could have turned on streamer mode and played without the license tracks to make my editing easier for content ID and all that, but that'd be like having a Drax understand metaphors. It's just not Guardians of the Galaxy without him. Am I patting myself on the back with that? Maybe? Oh well. He says we should combine both ideas. Sell Gamora's trinkets to Fin Fang Foom. It is brilliant. I'm sorry, that's just too good not to point out. Oh, oh yeah? You want monster? I'll show you monster! Find someone that's willing to blow you and themselves up to prove how much they love you. Piece of cake! <sighs> you can't be serious. Keep in mind how upset the team is at this landing. It is an impregnable fortress. So how do we impregnate it? Ask Peter! <laughs> Wear it like armor. And it can never be used to hurt you. Good thing I put on my official merchant costume! There is no such thing! Sounds like Quill went to school in Katath. Keeping in line with non-traditional alien design, meet Gelatinous Cube. Drax, you can pull this reactor out gently, right? Along with combat, we've got to use all of the Guardian's abilities to traverse the level. Never once does a member of the team not feel important. We'll take it out of Groot's cut. He doesn't understand money anyway. <laughs> the f*** you say? It's for sure what Groot said. Lady Hellbender could cross this jungle in seven strides. Sure she could. Or she would have flown over the mountains. Oh, she flies now. They fly now! They fly now? They fly now! I heard she shoots lasers out of her eyes. Now we're talking. Uh, I have not heard that one. I heard there are actually nine of her. That's why they call it Seknarf Nine. Ha! <laughs> that, that is preposterous! That one's preposterous! Little dialogue like this is what makes me believe in this group. Not as like a, I believe in you, but like, they're real people. Don't leaders usually cross first? Not if it's dangerous, because I need to cover everyone. Just because we're playing as Peter and he's the leader doesn't mean that fucking rhymed. Um, anyway, doesn't mean that he's got no arc to go through. I could totally see a lesser writer having Peter be the straight man rock that is the catalyst for every other character's arc to happen around. Peter! Saving your future husband. Yes, I'm shipping. And if that upsets you, just wait till I get to the simping. Peter's god power comes up through his elemental guns, and I like that it's left super open ended for a sequel on what's actually happening. It's a guns me, alone. Me, I, I, quote, I just want to see how they tick, otherwise, it might as well be magic. Or maybe it's just transforming him. God, these characters grow so much over the course of the game. By the end, Peter trusts Rocket with his cassette player. Release the beast. Let me dispose of it. Because that worked so well for you last time. We need a better plan of attack. Drax has a plan. Attack. Stumpy's back! Aw, oh, they're together. If these aliens can find love, maybe there's hope for me after all. In terms of the Guardians, aren't these two choices basically achieving the same goal? Guess we gotta go. Three cycles. So a cycle's a day, right? F three days on this? Forget it, take me to prison. Okay, get me my purse. The magical four words that'll get any child running with excitement. What's in the box? What's in the box? And yes, I'm back on my meme bullshit because it brings me joy, Marie Kondo style. All for one and one for all. That's surprisingly insightful. Did you just make that up? Uh, yep, just now, totally off the top of my head. Earth sayings not being understood widely will never get old. What I demanded was not a mistake. Don't you think 10,000 is a more reasonable amount, Drax? I do not. Drax was given the lead and ran with it. No, no, of course I will. I'll call you, I'll call you. What the f***? Peter's either got the best game, the lowest standards. Worst liar in history. I told you, he can't just pretend to be monstrous. Groot, whatever his incarnation, is always the sweetest lovable member of the Guardians. I don't know, it's got tentacles. 
Just ask Quill to charm it. You know I love me some center framing. Everybody grab a bike! And they don't make some stupid one-off bike escape section, which was totally what I was expecting. If you're gonna create something, just stick to what you're good at and put all your energy into it. And Eidos recognizes that. Is money all that you think of, Rodent? No, I also think about bombs. And booze. More honestly. <laughs> Check it out, the helmet actually had some weight to it. It may sound silly, but in games, not everything has the proper weight to it and can look unnatural. So tried. Loving reassurance. I look forward to our next encounter! I enjoy the Matt Mercer, how do you want to do it endings to the combat. It's like Star Wars hyperspace tunnels took DMT and had a baby with the channel colors. Maybe Cosmo will have a fetch quest for us or something. <laughs> Peter played D&D &D back on Earth, so he's talking about the gaming fetch quest. But he's also a dog, so it's a nice double entendre. And check out Nowhere, super fun, diverse alien species. Not just like... Weird squid things everywhere, like the Star Wars sequels. Nexus, what are you? Do you still have those suicidal urges? Not the time and place, but wanting to help. Did you do the thing yet? What is the thing she is referring to? I think Mantis is referring to having a fist bump with Adam Warlock, right? No, he's lying! I mean, oh. Drax following the promise shadowing. Hi, guys. I bet there are some that find Mantis voice grating, but I love this goofy, more sure of herself Mantis compared to the aloof one in the MCU. Star guy? We mean? And I'm in love with Mantis' nicknames for the crew. But I won't tell you what it is, because I think being distant makes me mysterious. Haven't we all done this at some point or another? So when did Hellboy and Thanos hook up? Us Earthers, we all look the same. It's not like you guys who very clearly look different. <laughs> That's actually pretty funny as our brains will get better at picking out the nuances of a race or species the longer we're around them. So it makes sense why these two boils look the same to Peter and Peter looks like any Terran. So a funny joke that has some meat computer merit to it. Peter, shoot now! We need to keep them separated! That's a neat way to spice up a boss battle and make the Guardians vital in the fight. You made the hard choice. Little doggo downstairs is feeling a disturbance in the force. Animals have a weird sixth sense and I will die on this hill. The guns for Young Lord don't nearly have as smooth as controls as present day Mr. Lord. He's just a 13 year old boy with no experience with these. A little too well seeing how we're in jail now. We're all in prisons of our own making, Peter. If I was to put every guardian in a D&D stereotype, which I will, Gamora's the dark edgy rogue. What? You can't take our ship? Check that out. Peter said, our. Subconscious growth. And Rocket's player is the one that always fights with the party and says, uh, it's what my character would do. We could theoretically go wherever and whenever with this thing. Even the places that don't exist, but, uh, do. Ido's setting up the possibility of having an MGU with Insomniac? And I guess possibly a Crystal Nine Dynamics, but we don't have that. Let's avoid Can I just say that Peter's dodges with his boots never got old? I'd sometimes shoot while running around just to do a little side flip. Top 10 dumbest things I ever saw you do. You should have seen how worried he was. Hey, Star Pants was our ticket with the captain. I was worried his death would lead to more jail time. It was adorable. I love how each of the Guardians' response here speaks to their character right now. Gamora's the deadliest woman and fears nothing. Rocket is still selfish and only cares about himself. Drax sees the father he loved in Peter since, you know, he was a father. And Groot says nothing since he's always the rock of the group. It's just something I gave to Corel when we were together during the war like a keepsake. It doesn't mean anything. Eidos is setting up these two and I'm here for it. Playing the long game with the relationship. Congratulations, Peter Quill. You will make a terrible father. It's not that his people are always literal, they just straight up have no filter. Keep your pants on. Although, it could be used as a distraction. Keeping an open mind. There's lots of walking and talking, but the dialogue's so good in the game, it's basically an interactive movie, and that's not a bad thing. Wow, oh, oh, okay, that... Stepping on a trans-dimensional hand, I sleep. Golden Boy's floaty car, real shit. I guess weird alien stuff is always relative, like Peter's squid girlfriend. Weird to many of us, but like, try everything once. Why are we not helping him? Cease this at once. <sighs> I know he's the bad guy, but like, come on. It's pretty chill of him to actively see these guys trying to lie and con him, and it's just like, really? Come on. I'm sorry, it stood out to me the entire game. I need to know what kind of product Gamora uses in her hair, because how does it stay like that? It's great. It looks amazing. Aren't you a little young for a dress that short? Aren't you a little old to write your name on your clothes? Haircut disc callback with a new comeback. Now that's more like it, Quill. I don't understand. I love you, Peter. What did I do? I 
can't imagine having to experience something like this again, let alone for the first time. It really shows why Peter is the Guardian's leader and is a beautiful showcase of the themes of moving on and getting to pick your family. Please. Shit, this had me crying in the club. And listen to the score coming in so fucking beautiful and heartbreaking. It's like every pass of that motif is a slow, constant pull at one's heart. Somebody's gonna. No! Sorry, Gubbins. There's only room for one R2D2 like character for the Guardians. Group. I'm talking about Group. Or maybe Cammy. You decide. Doesn't matter. This and him jumping to the hyperdrive fluid are some foreshadowing to Drax accepting the promise, but also shows that he's still trying to fight it. I saw my mom. Oh, it doesn't matter that we don't understand him. This look between them is what's important. We can't leave Nikki there. What he'll turn her into. God, this game just constantly blows me away. Murray's performance, along with the tears in her eyes forming, Gamora's arc might have been my favorite, as it feels the most subtle of the five. Sorry, Groot. You don't really have one. My family did not simply die. They were murdered. Drax is one step away from being Kratos, you know? Family death trauma, pale skin with red markings, super strong. Notice Drax didn't join at the bridge. Gardeners of the galaxy. <laughs> Gardeners. Continuity. This is a 10 minute long scene, and Eidos trusts in their writers to keep us engaged and not throw a shooting gallery at us to either cut the conversation short or just give our monkey brain something to do. Not something we see very often. Yes, I know about Death Stranding. Farewell, Guardians of the Galaxy. Hey, they checked the addendum. And what are we supposed to do? I don't know! Okay? I can't just conjure up answers every two seconds. A mark of a good leader, being honest about not knowing everything. And also be the only one rational enough to calm everyone down. Don't. I just. Can't do this right now. These are the stand-up moments that make me love this game's story. The entire fight felt so real and raw. I feel you, Peter. When things get rough, we always seek out music from our favorite band. This song is Star-Lord's Ghost. Seriously, go listen to Space Riders. It has no reason being this good. And on that token, what the hell was Ido smoking when they made this game? I haven't felt so much love for a story since the first Last of Us game. We have a shit. This is our room? <laughs> the mind of a child. We think space would be grander and more luxury, but no. It's just like floaty earth. It's complicated. No, it's not. Stop running. Imagine a kid understanding human emotions better than adults. Oh, wait. Typically they do because they haven't been raised to experience their emotions a certain way by their parents. Well, do you want to fix your ship or not? My ship. Yes, your ship. Oh, we definitely know something's wrong now. Rocket would have never admitted that right now. Yes, you do. You do. What are you doing? Heroes don't lie. None of this makes any sense. Yes, challenge my gamer brain. Just like with letting Thanos kill us later, it's funky to have to lose to win, which is very often the case when you want to grow. Drop the ego and accept your flaws, no matter how hard it can be. I just need you to understand how serious this is. We're not leaving. Family means nobody gets left behind. Where is the matriarch? Where is your trigger? Nah, she's a mantis. Can someone please translate her? I am Groot. <laughs> the tree that's always needing translating, translating. Gamora's trauma soft spot for kid shadowing. It felt like Drax was really starting to give me a chance, if not begrudgingly, and with a lot of insults. There's a crazy amount of dialogue written for this game. I was stuck wandering around this area looking for the way forward for like 10 minutes, and the team never ran out of stuff to say. I wonder how many lines of dialogue I probably missed just from progressing at a normal pace. I think what you're seeing is some version of me pushing you off a cliff. Oh, <laughs> little fuzzy. Your volatility is surprisingly consistent through all versions of time and space. Maybe we need to accept that not everything can be explained. The galaxy's a weird place. You just gotta go with the flow. Peter Quill would be a good trip sitter. Close one. You can say that again. Oh, I will. <laughs> I think this is about to be my game of the year. Granted, only like three games came out this year, but still. This is the one where I fail. Mantis would be really good at naming Friends episodes. Luke. Hey, guys, check it out! I'm totally not dead! Me waking up every morning. Just falling, crushing, Chitauri, Wait, water. hang on. Say Chitauri? Oh. Fog riddle, magic, 
whatever you want to call it, is the kind of wish fulfillment I need in my life. Ooh, this part. Ooh. Mantis is right. I felt so flark and smart whenever I figured out to be quiet. All this stuff surrounding Drax's struggle with the promise is so cool since we got to go against our gamer instincts. Kind of like the characters with the promise. Right? You're down here kicking ass for Drax. Not Drax the Destroyer, not Drax the Rampaging Criminal. Drax, man! This is awesome. I love for the first time in a long time the team is really coming together and then immediately are forced to fight themselves. Kind of a metaphor for them as before they can fully accept themselves and each other, they have to conquer the ghosts in their mind. And they can only do that together. And remember the name of the song that Peter listened to at the end of last chapter? We all need to learn something from you, man. You never complain. But or if you do, I don't catch it, but I, I, I'm pretty sure you probably definitely don't. Back to my D&D fun. Groot is that one experienced player that's just happy to be there while everyone else learns the game. And that's what this is about. Us. Growing together as a team, following a crazy lady into a death cave because one of us needs help. And Quill is the player that gets super into the roleplay and had a 40-page backstory that the DM fell in love with so much that they found music just for his character. <laughs> This remind anyone else of the ending of Scooby-Doo Monsters Unleash? All the party members are being sucked up to die and it's up to the fur baby to bail them out. Check it out. <laughs> Still not dead. Character arc completion callback. Hey, guys, check it out. I'm totally not dead. You can really see the team starting to come together. I mean, they weren't going to win, but they're holding their own against Adam Warlock who's probably pulling his punches, but let me have this. It's okay, guys, it's him. Aaron Witchcraft. No, wait, Aiden Warsock. Ashley Warsock. Adam Warlock? That's it! My heavenly healing is veiled malignance. A first folly I swore never to repeat. I mean, I, I don't know. Adam Warlock is basically Space Jesus, right? Just me? Okay. Having our Guardian's ultimate ability tied to their character ours is freaking brilliant. And how cool, we get to fight Thanos. Even if it's not really Thanos. Like I mentioned earlier, having to die to Thanos is super cool. And we hear that Drax killed Thanos, but remember at the start he said, allegedly, when accused with that feat. I feel like there's a story here that Drax never actually defeated Thanos himself, and the lie he has to perpetuate eats him up inside, and it's why we can only progress deeper into his mind by losing to Thanos. Not in Kansas anymore. I'm from Missouri, so shout out to the Midwest. Love you, Peter. You do not know what you ask. Damn, I gotta win it again. Look at the little lip quiver. I mean, Jesus, these animations and performances are so good. Your blissful ignorance is in ignoble pursuit. Easy, Shakespeare. I'm really enjoying this theme of connection being the only thing that can save the universe. Love is the one thing we still struggle to quantify, and I believe it will continue to elude us for as long as we exist. It reminds me of Interstellar, and I love it. Despite her meager stature, they both were. Were. They were. Oh, my heart. But it gets easier. If you surround yourself with the right people. I don't care how cliche and on the nose the dialogue is, it's beautiful and something I'm sure a lot of us need to hear. I love that this scene takes place in a black void. When it comes to things like this, nothing else in the world means anything or matters. And it goes to show the skill Eidos has with their character work, as they need nothing but their scripts and actors to make one of the most emotional scenes in the game. I will cherish the time that we had, and not resent the time that we lost. Don't cry because it's over. Smile because it happened, right? <gasps> it's this that really made me think of the Kratos connection. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this made it seem like Drax might have been the one that killed them, however accidental it may have been. Plagued by a pox, I was serendipitously suited to soothe. Warlock's wonderfully astute alliteration aghasts me at every moment of mouth movement. I tried. Yeah, this one's Mr. Positivity. It's enough to make you sick. Oh, I feel attacked. Go. I'll be where I'm needed when I need to be. A wizard is never late. Nor is he early. He arrives precisely when he means to. It is assumed Peter Quill's quarters was a daring display of dominance. Don't you start. No, please keep going. The nebula I knew had been twisted into a hateful, vengeful monster thing. One who would never stop unless I stopped her. So I did. If anyone was going to get a game award for best performance this year, I'd give it to Marae. This scene had me in tears. Like, this is her Oscar moment. The most deadly woman in the galaxy just admitted she loves us. <laughs> I did not. You did. 
You said you were in love with us right after the part about killing your sister. I said I enjoyed your company. That is the Katathian definition of love. <laughs> now that is probably the best use of Bathos I've ever seen. I'm stretching the meaning of it a bit, but going from Gamora's heartbreaking monologue to poking fun at her about love, it's just so heartwarming and beautiful going from two sides of the spectrum. We accept you, Gamora Zenwubri. It's Drax to first start this huddle, the man that openly detested Gamora at the start. It can't be. I saw you die. You ever heard of Easter, bro? Oops. Is this him? Him refers to, well, him, but also the name he gave himself when first created. Him. Like his name was him. I'll handle whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Yes, we overpower them with our own vastly superior fleet. Was that sarcasm, Drex? <laughs> it's just, it's perfect. This is us. This is how we park. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is how Quo parks anyways. <laughs> <laughs> this just puts a smile on your face, right? Remember that crash I told you to remember earlier? Piece of cake. <sighs> you can't be serious. What? They've come so far. Can I just say I love the overabundance of pink inside of all the menus and achievements? Like, it's my second favorite color, and I'm sure you can guess what my first one is. <laughs> Ain't no one writing a book about us. Nope, just comics, movies, and games. <laughs> Have you lost your fortune, mind? Come on! Ah, uh, the Guardians are really starting to become the goofy, not so serious series we know and love. Now this is a boss battle for the Guardians. Give me more giant alien creatures to fight ten times over a human one. Is this sacrilege to say that Lady H is my new mommy over Lady D? We conned you, robbed you, killed your baby. We can't take back what we've done, but we want to make it right. Owning up to past transgressions. Mint is so cute. Yeah, I rigged it to blast your scuddy music across all channels while the church is out looking for the source. Seriously? Fine. Let me go. Is the thesis of this story. Letting go, not Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> yes, the song Rocket picked a Zero to Hero by Star-Lord. perfect. These outfits are the secret job that Groot and Rocket were doing when they split up in nowhere. And they look slick as frick. And they match Space Jesus' golden glutes. Along with the gold of the promise. So, uh, reclaiming the color for good? Medic is really complicated, things. Putting him away! Eye of the Hurricane gives me seismic charge levels of euphoria. This final giant trench run is pretty freaking cool, but the best part is that the Guardians do all the traversal stuff on their own and don't need to be called out for it. Having their story arcs impact gameplay is why games are my favorite medium for storytelling. Let me take a screen cap real quick. I thought that- You promised me, my son! That's a really good reason why Raker's doing what he is. He was denying the revival of a son, and in his twisted way, he sought to be what Adam could not, which is give healing to the entire galaxy. Hey, we're like grew a little five o'clock shadow. Attention to detail. Help her accept that I'm not coming back. If anyone was positioned to bring Nikki back, it'd be Peter. It's, you know, he lost his mother too. But she isn't your daughter. She's not my daughter. When I first heard that, I got kind of upset. I was like, what was the point of the fake out? It feels like it cheapens Peter's reason to go for her. But then I realized it's actually perfect for the story. Guardians of the Galaxy is all about picking the family you want. And it's even more powerful that Peter is still willing to step up and be there for her than doing it from the notion of I'm her biological dad. Choosing our family. Ruining this! Mom will still come. It's not real, Nikki. Why the fuck is a game about aliens and space pirates making me so emotional? You hear that motif? It's the same track titled Moment of Truth that played when Peter was rejecting his promise. I just cared so damn much about the story and earned every beautiful moment like this. It makes me so sad that people write off different stories because of the way they're told or the setting that they choose. This is something everyone understands and it's beautiful. I don't even know what I'm feeling. It's like... empty... and heavy at the same time. I keep seeing her, but then as soon as I focus, I... Is this what it's always going to be like? I left all that in because it's just so good. This scene gets me every time, and it's just hard to put into words how much what Nikki is going through means to me. 
I need things to go back to how they were, even if it means making the same stupid cake for all stupid eternity. Just the thought that she might come back is better than admitting that she never will, and that... And then it's all my fault. It sucks that we get soulless games pumped out year after year just because the formula works and makes money. When we could be putting resources and money into projects like this, that has the ability to truly touch an individual and make them feel something. I'm sitting here reviewing this footage and riding with tears streaming down my face because what Nikki is going through, I don't think it's a feeling anyone can avoid. And to see her have someone to help her while she's spiraling, I, I don't know. The words I'm using to describe the feelings the scene evokes in me just fail me. And that's what great art is supposed to do. Make you feel something. Yes, it's in space and so far removed and not grounded, but that's just the setting. Everything else is more human than so many other games out there today. I'm sorry if this sounds silly, but sharing my experiences with these scenes and games is why I wanted to do this channel. This is probably my favorite scene of the year. I've done theater, and I can just imagine how heavy and beautiful this scene must have been to create on the mocap stage. There's nothing like that deafening silence after finishing a scene like this. It's really an indescribable feeling, but I just know it is there, and it makes me so happy for the people and these actors and these creators and this community to be able to go through that together. It's 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 indescribable. I don't think it's her. I think it's a very bad thing that wants to eat the entire galaxy. On the surface, it feels like that line cheapens the emotional weight here, but to me, it doesn't. It's not like any bathos. In game, it's a purple monster thing, but in all reality, the villain for this game was born out of grief and our fear of losing those we love. That thing that will destroy the galaxy is our inability to accept, move on, and let go. And it's something that we will be constantly dealing with and fighting. But it's up to us to surround ourselves with loving people and let them help us. It's a gesture. A small thing in the face of a very bad thing. Sometimes that's all we have. Sometimes that's all we have. God damn, this game. Bringing myself back to reality, it's like Guardians of the Galaxy is our small thing after being burned from so many other money-hungry companies that just want to use what we hold dear as a way to profit. Guardians of the Galaxy just wants to create a story that people will be able to relate to and understand and feel. It doesn't erase the dumpster's fire of Marvel's Avengers or COD games yearly, but it's something to cherish, and that's why I still need you to buy this game, even if you did just get it all spoiled for you in this video. This scene means just as much to me as when Joel held Ellie in winter or Clint and Lee at the end of The Walking Dead Season 1. Whatever happens, you're not alone, okay? And at the end of the game, we still get two big bombastic boss fights. I mean, it's still a space opera video game after all. But again, Eidos gives us a 15 minute scene of just straight dialogue and emotion. And I wouldn't trade it for the world. The game could have just had the scene and then one more wrapping it up. And I would have been satisfied. One child. He did it. And even as Raker is defeated, you can't help but feel sympathy for him. Everything he had done came from that same place that we just saw Nikki was at. It begs the question, where do we draw the line on not reaching out to help people, whether they have already committed their terrible acts or not? There's a part of me that thinks you know, anybody can come back and be better. But of course, that's just naive optimism. But still, it makes me think. We reached out to Nikki and got her back but weren't willing to meet Raker emotionally and pull him back. Maybe I'm being too nice to him and you all think I'm crazy, but I can take it. And the music scoring over Raker isn't triumphant. It's somber and slow and sounds a lot like a version of Moment of Truth. This is a victory, but his death isn't one to celebrate so hastily as he was just another victim. I feel simply... Fabulous. All right, enough of that ooey gooey stuff. You look fabulous. And how cool, interrupting the credits to give our true final boss and to show that even the strongest, wisest, and best of us can fall? Love it. What are you all up to? Can always appreciate a villain with some playful personality. I said no! Not today! Yes! Nothing fills my head with serotonin more than teamwork. And what better track than the final countdown? I mean, seriously, what better track? Tell them about the fist bump to save the universe. So, I'm sure you already know this by now. This game is flarking amazing. 
Even if you watch this video and have gotten to this point, you should still go by and play it. Truly one of the best games to come out of this year and one of the best game narratives I've ever played. Does it have kind of weak gameplay? Sure. Is it super duper linear? Yeah, but for any of its faults, it's 100% worth playing through because the story is stellar. The story erases any of its past transgressions, any bad part, because it's just that. It's just that good. It's just, I'm tripping over myself because it's just that good. There were so many small moments worth winning that fostered that connection I had with all the characters that I didn't put in this video because, I mean, we don't have all day for that. And I want to leave some stuff for you guys to experience. I wasn't originally even going to pick up this game because we'd been so burned by Marvel's Avengers, but this is flarkin' art. I haven't cried at a game like this since The Last of Us Part 1, and if that's not enough praise for you to go play it, I don't know what else could be. What did you guys think of Guardians of the Galaxy? Have you played it? Let me know down below. And if you want to hear my first impressions of the game, you can go find them over on my Patreon. Your support means the world to me because every day I get to wake up and do this for you guys. So thank you. And remember, drink some water, drive the speed limit, and most importantly, guys, love one another. Pizza.